You ever played Peg Solitaire? You know, you jump pegs over other pegs until one remains? Or more likely you don't and you wonder what happened? Well, imagine that, but way, way more complicated. And yeah, that's pretty much Tesserae. Tesserae was released in 1990, written by Nicholas Schlott and published by Inline Design. Unlike a lot of games I review, though, I can't leave it at that. Prepare for a little bit of history on this one. Time for... backstory? While Nicholas Schlott did write Tesserae, the game actually originates from one Kent Brewster, yes, the writer, who wrote a DOS Quick Basic shareware game called Stained Glass, meant to run on practically anything with 256k of memory and able to display the IBM extended character set. Color... really helps. It's not technically required, but it would be really irritating to play it without. Oh, and it also includes source code, so, you know, that's pretty cool. Yes, this means I'm reviewing something that was originally a DOS game. <gasps> yeah, I know. I'm just as surprised as you are. I thought this was a Mac-only title. So Nick Schlott ported Stained Glass over to Macintosh's shareware with Kent Brewster's blessing. This would eventually become Tesserae, and, in a strange cyclical porting cycle, Tesserae would then be ported to Windows 3.1 and DOS. And the NEC PC 9801. But I couldn't even find that in ROM format. I've only got a couple of screen caps and a box shot to prove that that one exists. And trust me, I dug like mad. In some stroke of luck, I found an archive of a thousand or so PC-9801 ROMs. But no Tesserae. Later, Game Boy and Game Gear versions would be released, developed by Eurocom and published by Game Tech. There would also be a shareware game a few years later called Polytile, that is essentially Tesserae with a fair bit more customization. And in 2011, Tesserae 20th Anniversary Edition would be released on the Mac App Store, which included leaderboards and trophies, just in case beating the levels wasn't enough for you. So how do they all compare? Well, just grab whatever works on your platform. They're all similar, though the Game Boy and Game Gear versions don't really save anything. How hard is it to have a high score list? Or at least a little check mark? Anything? From a user interface perspective, the games are very ingeniously crafted. The game is easily playable in monochrome thanks to the symbols, making it easy to see what a move is going to do, even if you can't remember how the different primary colors mix, which I'm embarrassed to admit I sometimes can't. Speaking of which, I should be explaining how to play this, huh? I made the comparison to Peg Solitaire earlier, and the goal is the same. Jump the tiles over each other until one remains. When you flip a tile over another tile, it will subtract from the tile it's flipping over and add to the tile it's landing on. If either of those is impossible, the move isn't valid. The only exception is a primary color flipping over or landing on a primary color. Otherwise, the game would be quite impossible. It's best to think of the secondary and tertiary tiles as stacks of two or three tiles. That is what it counts for in the tile count, after all. You must be left with one primary colored tile to win. Thankfully, the game also has an undo function that goes clear back to the beginning of the game, and even the game itself suggests you make extensive use of it. There are nine different boards, and you can play them all individually, or in a consecutive format, which they call a tournament, if you're that good. A tournament, by definition, would be a simultaneous competitive competition, but whatever. With three different difficulties, that makes for 30 different high score tables. They're listed by least number of tiles first, then the least number of moves as a tiebreaker. Except for tournaments, which you must finish for it to count. And yes, the high score table supports long names, though they may get cut off. Ah well. It's a good attempt, at least. If you're looking to see me complete an advanced tournament, you're out of luck. Heck, if you're looking to see me complete an advanced board, you're out of luck. I can barely complete a few intermediate boards and barely struggle to do a beginner tournament. Let's explain the difficulties, though. On beginner boards, a quarter of the tiles are secondary tiles, except for the first board, which is all primaries. This is the difficulty meant for learning the game, at least according to the instructions. Intermediate is the level that most closely mirrors the original DOS version. One half of the tiles are secondary tiles. The instructions even call this the real game. On advanced, there are three secondaries for every five primaries. Wait, I think the game might be mixed up. Yeah, there's definitely more tiles on the advanced boards than the intermediate, and I'm comparing the ones without tertiary tiles. Intermediate has three-eighths secondaries, and advanced has one half from what I can tell. Anyways, yeah, the later advanced boards and the first one for some reason, come with tertiary tiles. Even the instructions say this difficulty is for experts and masochists, and I can say they're certainly right. If someone can actually do an advanced tournament, they deserve a friggin' medal, because I don't think I can get past a single board. So why are secondary and tertiary tiles such a pain? 
Well, if they're on the edges, or especially in the corners, they often require finding a way to make another tile of the same kind nearby, since they can't be jumped over as easily, or, in the case of the corners, at all, and other secondary tiles can end up making them pretty wedged in. Sometimes I wonder whether all the board layouts are actually possible. I do wonder why this never took off, despite the glowing reviews it got. I guess it isn't exactly the pick-up-and-play type of game. Me as a kid could play Tetris. I didn't have any clue how to play this. I'm not even all that great at it now. But whatever you own, if you're a puzzle game fan, you owe it to yourself to at least give Tesserae a try. It may not be for everyone, but it's a unique cerebral experience nonetheless. Now I'll be getting into the winners of the latest poll. For the sake of taking a break from puzzle games, up next is going to be Terra Nova Strike Force Centauri. Yeah, DOS game. Till next time.